We are glad you're here. If you're here for the first time and you don't know me yet, my name is Ronnie Stewart, and I have the honor of serving as the lead pastor here at Authentic, and we are glad you're here. If you're watching today, we're glad that you're watching. Turn to someone and say, I'm glad you're here. Come on. I am glad you are here. We are in a new series today, if you haven't noticed, called Dangerous Prayers. And I want you to understand that through the course of this series, this is a lot of teaching, so bear with me, because I like to preach, so I'm going to do my best to teach. And the Lord just kept downloading so much information to me, but we have to understand how powerful our prayer is. And what is prayer? It's conversation between you and the Lord, amen? Prayer is something that you have as a weapon, and we're going to learn through the course of this. How many of you get sick and tired of just thinking, man, I feel like my prayers are inadequate. You know, I feel like all I do is pray for my cheeseburger and fries to be blessed, and you know... And and it's like, Lord, keep my family safe. And you ever feel like your prayers are just kind of monotonous? They're kind of just like the same old thing over and over and over again. And and I I tell you, I'll be honest with you, it's an area sometimes we can be intimidated in because I'm not, you know, I don't do the King James, thee, thou, and no prayers. It's not me. I'm not a Shakespearean prayer. I don't get into that and sound like, you know, very profound when I'm praying all the time. But can I tell you, that's not what prayer is about. It's not about the pitch of your voice. Amen? Now, now I know that, that there is power in how we're passionate about what we're saying, but I don't care how loud you get. If there's no power behind it, it means nothing. You are a clanging sound, in a, right? There, there's nothing to it, but it's the power behind what we do. I want you to know something, too, as well. Before I get into this, this is a, what we call a toe tag. Hope, um, pretty much you never will see one of these, I guess, right? <laughs> Maybe on someone else, but you're never going to see it on yourself. And the reason we chose these uh, after the fact, because we thought about it, is that we're going to go from death to life in our prayers. So we want you to take some of these. We have a prayer wall in the back. We're calling our, our wailing authentic prayer wall. And we want you to write down your prayer requests on here. You don't have to put your name if you don't want to. If you're comfortable, that you can. And you're going to take it back to that prayer wall. There's some string, and you're going to tie it on there. And what we're going to do every week, if you want to go out and pray over that wall, pray over it. At the end of this series, we're going to bring them all over here. We're going to pray over all of them, believing that God's hand will be upon everything that we've asked. Amen. And if you want to put a picture out there of a lost loved one, you know, I mean, don't go putting, hopefully you're not putting someone that's in the crowd, you know, whatever. Um, That one you probably want to put your name on so they know who did it. But if you want to put a picture of your family, that's okay. It doesn't mean your family is going through horrible things or they're bad people. It just means pray for them. Make sure, though, if you get a picture, it's one that's copied because we don't want to lose it. We're not responsible for anything you put up there. But this is what this is about. I want you to understand that prayer is one of the most intimate ways that we can connect with God. It's conversation. Amen. In prayer, what we do is we share our feelings and we share all of our thoughts and our deepest concerns and our fears with God. Some of the most greatest things that we go through in life. And when we spend time in prayer, what we're doing is we're hearing from God. Come on, how many of you need to hear from God, right? And you're making space for the Spirit to step in and to transform our hearts through what we're facing and what we're going through. But I want you to see that Scripture teaches us that God is truly just a prayer away. Can I get an amen on that? One prayer away. And what a privilege it is to be so close to God. When Peter cried out to Jesus as he sunk in the water, it wasn't just that he knew that Jesus could rescue him because he did, but Jesus was the closest one to him to rescue him. So my question for you as we get into this is how close do you feel that you are today to the Father, to where you can hear his prayers? He doesn't leave you, but I believe that we put stuff in our life that clutters the voice of God, that clutters all the things that God's trying to show us, and we're covering and surrounding our life with chaos instead of with prayer. There's different types of prayer in the Bible. And in a minute, I'm going to read to you out of Ephesians. But before we do, in in this worship team, awesome. Let's let's give them, man, they're doing so good. Keep doing that. That sounds great. There's there's so many different kinds of prayers. But some of the most powerful ways in prayer that we hear, there's types of prayers. There's a prayer of worship and adoration. That's a prayer. Did you know that your prayers are not only God help me, God give me, God do for me, God make this? That's not what prayer is. It's not just that. Prayer is worship. Did you know that? Prayer is adoration. Sometimes don't even ask for nothing and just go up and say, God, I just want to bless your name today. God, I want to exalt who you are. I want to recognize. Listen, when you recognize who he is, it gives you the strength to know who you are. Amen. Prayers of worship and adoration, prayers of thanksgiving. 
enter his gates and his courts, amen, with thanksgiving. How about just go to him and say, God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for what I have. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for the things that are not even done yet because I know you're going to do them, amen? amen? Prayers of thanksgiving. Prayers for direction and guidance from the Holy Spirit. God, I don't know what to do. Holy Spirit, guide me, amen. Prayers for healing. Did you know that we, we can pray for healing? Now, I'm not saying every, every single prayer you pray for healing is going to be healed the way you want it to be and when it's going to be done, or even if it's going to be done that way, but that doesn't mean that we don't pray for that. Amen. We pray in belief, but it's all to the purpose and the glory of God in his plan. Are you okay with that, though? Are you okay to hear no? Are you okay to hear not yet? Prayers of intercession. How many inter intercessors do we have in the house? Say amen. Now that means where you are praying and you are not stopping, you are interceding on behalf of something or for someone. Man, we called it back in my days, tarrying. How many of you ever, we, you tarry, you pray and you continue to pray and we believe that we're not gonna stop until it happens. Pray until something happens. Push through until you get a breakthrough in your life. Amen. There's prayers of confession to God. Lord, I pray, Lord, I just want to just confess this to you, Lord. I know you know it, but I need to speak the words out, Lord, so I understand what I'm saying. Confessing it to you. There's corporate prayers we do together, and then there's personal prayers that you have with your time with God. But here's what I do believe before I read Ephesians. I believe that it's time that we wake up. Look at someone and say, wake up. And we start praying faith-filled, dangerous, effective prayers before God. Amen? Amen? The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. What does that mean? I want it to be effectual because it's going to be the will of God. Fervent means on fire. Come on, amen? amen. Prayers of a righteous man. My righteousness means that it's not my will but yours to be done. And they avail. They're going to happen. God's hand is upon it. Father, we thank you for today, Lord. Have your way in the service. In Jesus' name. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And then I'm going to let you have a break. Is that okay? I just, I just asked her if she could play through the, the course of my reading. I just feel, look, there's something special in the house today. I don't know if you could feel it or if you sense it, but here's what's going to happen. God is awakening us to something that is happening in our nation, happening in our households. I think people are getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. And I believe I see people rising up, but I'm going to tell you the biggest thing that you can have in the process of you rising up is a prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, then you have a square life. Amen. I just made that up on the spot, but you can take it. See, the Holy Spirit gives you things when you're in the spirit, right? Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. You may know this. If you don't, this is the armor of God, but I want us to look at the last part of that as we go in. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord, not yourself, right? But what? In the Lord, into the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For your struggle, please listen to this part, is not against flesh and blood. Quit being mad at your neighbor. It's not, it, they're just going through something. Okay? Your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers and against authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Pause for a minute. How many of you understand, we believe in God. Lift your hand if you believe in God. I think you wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. If you believe in God, then you believe in the devil. If you believe in the devil, you gotta believe in demonic spirits. And if you believe in that, you gotta believe in angelic spirits, amen? Angels that are surrounding us have been given charge over us. We're not here to do a hocus post, pocus scare you type thing. We believe in the spiritual realm. There is a battle going on for you right now. That's why your prayer life needs to be in check. Let's move through this. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when, you, when the day of evil comes, it's coming. Some of it's here, amen. But when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. How? With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Did you know that there's peace in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. That covers your mind. Amen. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Here we go. Look at someone and say, and pray. 
But pray what? Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen? Father, bless your word. We thank you. We give you the glory. Speak to us. We, we speak against confusion right now. Give us understanding as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen? <laughs> I got a lot of verse for you. So if you're taking notes, write them down. If not, go back and watch this because I promise you this is going to help you in your life. If you apply this. Listen, I want to read to you Luke 10 and 19. It says, I have given you, don't you love it when the Lord gives you something? How many of you like to get stuff, right? Here's what he's given you. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and spiders. I'm going to add that in. Okay, that's just my version. And to overcome all the power of the enemy. I love the last part. Nothing will harm you. Right? Nothing will harm you. Nothing will will harm you. So where is this authority that we just talked about? He says, I have given you authority, right? But where is the authority? I want to show you some verses to back this up. I don't just want to talk about it, but I want to give you context in it. It says in John 14, verses 13 and 14, he says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. Tell someone it's in his name, amen? Here's where the authority comes from. In my name. So why? So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. There is a purpose behind this. There is a method behind this. We wonder why we see people in the Word of God and we see all these massive miracles take place and the Lord answering prayers of, of people that we know. And, but, but we wonder sometimes, why doesn't God answer my prayers? Have you ever wondered that? Now, not every prayer is meant to be answered in that way or the way you think it should be. But when you pray with purpose and you understand when your prayers line up with his will, amen, when they line up with his will and for God to get the glory, that's when prayers begin to be answered. So as it goes on, it says that you may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So my message today is titled this, very simple, might sound old school, you ready? In the name of Jesus, in the name of of Jesus. This is the most powerful thing and weapon that you can have in your prayers is praying in the name of Jesus. I'm not a Jesus only person. I'm not trying to say something in a wrong theology, but what I'm trying to tell you is that there's power in his name. Amen. There's power in his name. It's not just the letters of his name. It's the power behind the authority of who he is. John 16, 23 and 24. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Verily, or very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask. Someone say, in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Therefore, God exalted him. Who is that? He's talking about Jesus, right? To the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, come on, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, check this out, to the glory of God the Father. There's the purpose behind it. I want to read you and just paraphrase this story, and I encourage you to go back and look at it. I don't have enough time to tell you the, the, the whole, read the whole thing, but go back and look. In Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, it's the story about the hour of prayer in the temple. And Peter and John were on their way up there at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. They were headed up to the hour of prayer in the temple as they joined the crowd in the house of God. And on the way in, they came to the gate called Beautiful, which this gate was inlaid with, with gold and precious stones. And it was situated at the entrance of the eastern side of the temple courts. They came across this man who had been crippled, crippled since birth. A man that was so lame, he couldn't even hobble up on crutches. Every day he had to have his friends that loved him and cared about him enough to take him up there and carry him and lay him at the entrance as he began to beg from the people that were going in to pray. You see, he wasn't allowed to go inside this temple to join in prayer. And so he sat on the steps and he begged for change. And people would give them their loose change. 
They would do that sometimes, not just to help them, but sometimes to ease their own conscience as they went in to pray, seeing him have to stay outside. Someone say change. Come on, look at your neighbor and say change. But as Peter and John approach this man on this particular day, they get up there and he's asking them for some change. And Peter and John, if you look previously in this story, they had just been filled with the Holy Spirit and they're on fire, that fervent life, amen? And they're excited and they're full of joy. And Peter and John stopped to talk to them. Not like everyone else who would just kind of walk by and not look. But Peter looked at this man and said, look at me. He said, look at us as we're talking to you because something profound is about to happen. Perhaps the man's head was bowed because the Bible talked about how he he kept his head low. But here's Peter. He's saying, look at us. So he looks up at him, expecting for Peter and John to maybe dump some coins into his cup, expecting a little bit of change. But Peter said this in Acts 3, verses 6. He said, silver and gold I don't have. He said, but what I do have... I give you, and here's what he said. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So what did he have? He didn't have money. He didn't have silver or gold. What did he have? He had the power and the authority in Jesus' name. Amen? Proverbs 22 and 1 says this, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver or gold. You know, as you go through this, and we, we kind of paraphrase over verse eight, Peter took hold of the man, the Bible said, in his right hand, and he lifted him up after he said that. And in that moment of time, after he confessed it, and after he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, the Bible said that strength came into this man's feet and ankle bones for the very first time in his life. And he stood up leaping. He began to dance around in front of all the hundreds of Jews that were there, And he was praising God for this miracle that took place. See, this man was wanting some pocket change. Alms. He was wanting them to drop some coins in. But he didn't get the change that he was expecting. He didn't get the change that maybe he got and it would last him for a night or for one meal. But in other words, he received a change that was greater than any amount of money in the world. He got a change of a lifetime. Amen. And that's the change that this world needs. That's the change that you need. You don't need the one night stand that's going to help you for the night, amen? We need a change that's going to outlast our problems. We need a change that's going to outlast one day and one moment in our life. And that's only going to come through our prayer and our belief and our trust in his name today. Over and over again in the scriptures as we read and we continue to study, we read where it says, in my name, in Jesus' name, in his name. Can I tell you some stuff? The devils were powerless because of his name in Luke chapter 10, amen. The Bible talked in Mark how demons were cast out in his name. And we see over in Acts how people were healed in accordance to his name. And in Romans, how salvation comes through his name. Over in Matthew 28, we baptize in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians Six were justified in his name. Everything that we should do should be in his name because it says in Colossians 3, 17, and whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we're not making this up. In fact, when most of us pray, how do we conclude our prayer? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Why? Why? I'm going to show you some reasons. Number one point, we have access. Tell someone we have access and we have credit in the name of Jesus. This is good stuff, man. But what does that mean to pray in the name of Jesus? Are you ready? I'm going to give you a bunch of stuff today. When we pray in the name of Jesus, first of all, here's what we do. We are admitting the bankruptcy of our own name. When I pray in Jesus' name, I come boldly before God. Why? Because the power in his name, not my name. It would kind of be like a bride back in the older days that maybe came from poverty and she married a wealthy husband. And at that point, the woman takes on the name of the husband and all that belongs to him. So she no longer acts in her name, but in his name. And everything that belongs to him now belongs to her as well. We are heirs to the throne. 
joint heirs with Jesus. Amen? 1 John 2 and 1 says this, But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate. What is that? That's a person who publicly supports or stands in the place or comes on your behalf. He's advocating for you. That's Jesus to the Father. Amen? We have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Can I tell you, Christ is not his last name. That's kind of a title. That's his abilities. Christ means the anointed one. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He stands in our place, amen. He went to the cross in our place. I heard the saying once that says this, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. Listen, when we pray in Jesus' name, we also identify and we connect with the person of Jesus Christ. We identify and we connect with the person of of Jesus Christ. Jesus has literally given us his name. I want you to think of all the names the world has given you. They're not good, are they? When I use the name of Jesus, here's what I'm doing. I'm confessing that he is mine, amen, and that I am his. It's like kind of going to the bank of heaven. Look, he's not an ATM, but how many of you know that there are blessings that are prepared for you, amen? It's not like saying I'm going to put a 10 in and a 100 is going to fall out. That's not how it works. We know that God does bless you tenfold and a hundredfold. We know that that can happen, but how many of you know that it happens only if it's in accordance with the will of God to give the glory to the Father, Amen? My God shall supply all my needs. It didn't stop there, does it? According to his riches and glory. To his riches and his glory. So that he may get the glory out of it. That's where the purpose comes from. I'm declaring, Lord, you're mine. I am yours today. So it's kind of like going to that bank and knowing that I, I don't have much to deposit, right? But if I'm going in his name... That's where the return comes in. But if I go in my name, I can get absolutely nothing. But Jesus has an unlimited resources in heaven. And I believe that he can grant us the privilege of going in his name in our life. Listen, my son, R3, y'all know him as Ronnie. He has been highly blessed and favored from God because he was given his father's name. <laughs> He's the lucky one. But can I tell you that he has used that name many, many times to use my credit, <laughs> acting in my name at a store, using my debit cards and credit cards, many times on his own, many times when I didn't want to, you know, we have kids so they can go to the grocery store for us, right? We have kids that say, son, change the TV station, get me the remote, even though it's, I'm on the couch and it's right there, Right? <laughs> But there's many times I send him, check this out, on my behalf, come on, to do what I need done. I have kids, and there's many times I'll have one of them come in and say, Grayson ain't listening, he's doing this and that. And Dallas will tell me that, and I'll say, you guys have done this. You go tell him, because <laughs> I'm super busy, can't get to it. You go tell him that dad said... It better stop or else, right? They don't want to know what the or else is. I don't even know what the or else is, but we throw it in there. And sure enough, when he goes in now and he says, dad said, you better stop or else, or dad said to do this, it comes with a different set of authority. Because he knows he's coming not only on his behalf, but he knows that he's coming on behalf of the Father's word or a promise of what's going to happen if it doesn't happen or change. So you see the difference of coming in the authority of another name. I have two older brothers, and there's many times in life where uh, I'm telling you, I was, I was small at one point, and eventually I grew taller than both of them. But when I was younger and I was smaller, and, and maybe I was getting beat up on the playground, which happened sure many times, I would run home, and you know what I'd do? I'd get my two older brothers, and then we'd go walking down the street, and I'd be <laughs> strutting like this. I'd walk like this the way back, but I was strutting, and I'm like, here we go. And sure enough, man, I was so much more tougher with them standing behind me. You know, he says that his, his goodness and his mercy, that was my brother. One was goodness, one was mercy. They will follow you all the days of your life. <laughs> and then 
when I stand before that adversary that wanted to beat me up, they feared me more than they did when I was by myself because I was coming in a different name. Is this good so far? Anybody getting this? Amen? I'm telling you, I think sometimes the Lord just needs to open our eyes. So also, I'm going to go quick here. When we pray in Jesus' name, we pray in the authority the authority of his name. We're, we're kind of like the kid who picked up the policeman hat and he wandered out into the traffic and he began to do this and direct the traffic and people began to follow him. Why? Not because of the kid, it's because they respected the position. They respected the uniform. They expected the authority that was behind that. So to pray in his name is to ask by his authority and to ask by his authority is to ask in accordance to his will as revealed in his word. When we pray in his name, here's what we also do. We submit to his will. This is good. This is important. You have to be in submission of the will of the Father. Even Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, man, his flesh did not want to go to the cross, but his spirit knew because he was flesh, man, and, and cuts hurt him, right? Bruises, and he, he, we know the story of what he did on the cross, but he was flesh, and then his spirit, they were going through this battle, even though we know he was sinless, and, but he looked at the Lord and he said, can you take this cup from me, God? Father, take this cup from me. Eventually, the spirit took over, right? And he said, nevertheless, at thy will. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, Lord. What will you have me do, God? What will you have me say, God? When we pray in Jesus' name, we are representing him here on earth. We're ambassadors under the authority of your representation of who he is. It's kind of like the legal arrangement called power of attorney. How many of you know what power of attorney are? Is the power of attorney. It's where one person can represent another person in their absence and act on their behalf. And Jesus has given every believer unlimited and general power of attorney in all matters and with the right to use his name in every situation. Luke 10, 19, he says, behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means, nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen. Amen. When we pray in Jesus' name, here's another thing that we got to do and that we can do. We pray with expectation. What do you mean? I'm going to expect what I'm asking to happen. Even if it doesn't happen how I believe, I'm expecting something to happen. How many of you came with expectation today in this house? I'm expecting something to happen. I'm expecting something to change. If not, then you don't have belief or faith because with faith and belief comes expectation. When we pray in Jesus' name, we may expect the answer in accordance to the value in the name of Jesus. And I'm here today to let someone know that Jesus has given you permission. Look at someone and say, he's given you permission. Come on. He's given you permission to take back your marriage. He's given you permission to take back your life in the name of Jesus. As I'm closing, I remember years ago as I was a church planter, church was growing and the enemy was trying to take us out, man, in every area as the church began to grow and grow and grow. Well, I, I had the swine flu and I never forget, I don't know if you've ever had it, it's horrible. Fever went through the roof, and I, I was in bed for several days thinking this is going to take me out. I felt trapped. I felt like there was no way out of this. All of a sudden, one night, my wife was out in the room taking care of the kids. I look up, and I seen a figure with a black cloak standing on the end of my bed, and its head went all the way to the ceiling. And I couldn't see the face. It was like swirling smoke. Remember, we believe in God. We believe that we have to believe in demonic spirits. I'm not here to spook you out, but I'm here to open your eyes. Amen. And I seen it standing on the edge of my bed, and all of a sudden, fear gripped me. And I thought, this is it. I'm getting taken out right now. But in that moment, with trembling faith, all I did, I couldn't scream, I couldn't yell. I laid there, and something came over me, a boldness. And I whispered the name of Jesus. I said, in Jesus' name. And can I tell you, in that moment, peace begin to flood over my life. 
the fear was now covered with this profound sense of peace that began to replace it. And I look up and that figure was gone. And can I tell you something also that happened in that moment? And I'm not saying this is going to happen for us every single time. But in that moment, I was healed. I was healed in that moment. I, I, I can't sit here and tell you any different. I don't know what it was, but I felt like my fever broke and my swine flu got away. You know what I did? I stood up to my feet. You guys might think this is crazy. What I felt do? I walked and I imaginary, I grabbed the enemy by that cloak, even though he wasn't there. And I walked down through the hall. My wife's like, what are you doing? She thought I was delusional. And I walked to the front door. I opened the front door and I kicked the enemy out of my house. I just felt like that's what I needed to do, okay? I felt like that's what I needed to do. And I just felt this boldness, and I, and I just began to think, God, what am I doing? Why did I allow myself to feel this way for so long? Why did I sit there and fear like that? But at the name of Jesus, amen? The name of Jesus. So who is Jesus as I'm closing? Do you want me to tell you who Jesus is? Here we go, you ready? There's so many things that he is, but I'm gonna name some of you right here. We see in 1 Timothy 4 and 10, the Bible says he's our savior, amen? I want you to stand to your feet. We see over in Job 19, the Bible says that he is our redeemer and that our redeemer lives, amen? We see in John chapter 6, he said he's the bread of life. He's the Lord of lords over in John 21. He's the son of the living God in Matthew 16. Listen what Isaiah says. It says he's the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. He's the king of kings over in Timothy 6. He's the almighty God in Job. The Bible says in Revelation 1 that he is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Matthew 23 says that he is our high priest in Hebrews 3 and 1. We see in John, he's not only a teacher, but over in 1 John, he's our advocate, amen. In Hebrews 9, 1 and 5, he is our mediator. And in Acts 10, 42, he's the judge. I love this part, Ephesians 2 and 20, he's our chief cornerstone our foundation on what we build our life and our faith on amen hebrews 12 and 2 he's the author and the finisher of our faith in john 1 29 he's the lamb of god he's the good shepherd in john 10 in john 1 and 1 he's the word amen he's the fountain of living water in jeremiah 17 in deuteronomy he's our rock in john he's our messiah in john again he's the true vine we see in John 3, he's the bridegroom. We also see in Revelation 5, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And in John 8 and 58, he is the great I am. And that tells me everything that you need, he is. If you need love, he's your love. If you need peace, he's a peace that passes all understanding. So whatever it is that you need today, that's who he is. I don't care what the world has called you. I don't care what they branded you. I don't care what name they've given unto you. Listen, when you become a believer, you're born again. You are no longer what the world says you are. You are now what he calls you, amen. You're no longer Jacob. You are now Israel, amen. So I pray today that through the course of this series, you understand that you have power. The Bible says there's power of life and death in your tongue. Not just in your thoughts, in your tongue. You've got to speak it out. And sometimes you might not know what to say. And all you can say is, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, every demonic spirit must leave you and your household. Start speaking the name of Jesus over your family. Start speaking the name of Jesus over your finances and over your life and over your health. And trust that God is going to come through in accordance to his will, that he gets the glory. That's how you get answered prayers. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Solomon had it down. Why was Solomon the wealthiest man ever to live? Because he didn't ask for wealth and riches. He said, Lord, give me wisdom that your glory may be shown. Give me your wisdom, Lord God. And when I pray for his wisdom and his will, all these other things are, don't worry about tomorrow. That's why we don't pray for these things or for food for today or yesterday. God knows our needs, amen? Here's what I wanna do today, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget to take these prayer tags. I know I went a few minutes over here. Y'all gave me four minutes and 42 seconds. It's all right. Here's the good thing. I'm gonna pray for you and those of you who 
maybe you don't have that relationship with God. Maybe you've, you're wondering, man, as a believer, I have access to all these things. Yes, you do. You're about to be granted the access through the name of Jesus if you will receive him into your life right now. What do you mean? John 4, 16, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus. That's how you have access to him today. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in this room today and maybe you say, I want that relationship with him. I want that connection with him. I want Jesus in my life today. I'm just gonna give you a simple prayer. You can say it however you want to, but I just pray that you have a conversation with him today. Will you repeat this after me? Dear Heavenly Father, today, Lord, I confess my sins to you. I repent and I turn away from my old life. Today, Lord, come into my life Make me new. I make you my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord some praise in this house today? Amen.